now in sunrise. Winter weather back at it again. Roads deteriorating later this morning. I'll be timing things out. Good evening. Security concerns swirling this morning after the FBI announced that Russia and Iran may be trying to influence our election. The message for Americans as President Trump and Joe Biden prepare to square off in one final debate. We're live in Wisconsin where there is a new record high for coronavirus deaths in a single day. Just how full hospitals are getting as new patients arrive. High Court hopeful. Amy Coney Barrett is just two votes away from a seat on the Supreme Court. What her first case could be and the big impact it could have on Minnesota. And no desks, no logins or virtual lessons. I get to see friends and it's just fun and I don't even know I'm learning anything. We introduce you to a group of teachers and students thinking outside the box when it comes to education. It's Thursday, October 22nd. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. You are waking up to what could be another messy day on the roads. Mobile 11 near St. Cloud and right now not snowing there yet, but it is coming. Take a look. You can see on the radar here snow to the north of us, rain to the south and Chris singing with me and here we are stuck, stuck in, in the, the middle, middle with, with you. you. That's right. It's yes. morning karaoke here on Sunrise. <laughs> Send us some lyrics and we'll sing them for you. Some kids in the Alexandria area might be doing karaoke today because a couple of those schools are mm -hmm. closed. You can see that at the list scrolling at the bottom of your screen screen right now. Alicia also tracking a couple of crashes here in the metro, but first let's get over to Guy for the latest on this weather. A little more snow on the way and already in some areas. Uh, exactly coming down too pretty heavy in some areas, so we'll jump right into radar. If you're just now joining us, you can see snow showers in the Alexandria area still coming down heavy. The Brainerd area seeing some snow, uh, Bemidji maybe seeing some light snow. So from Alexandria to Bemidji is where you're seeing the heaviest snow stretching as far east as into northwestern Wisconsin into uh, uh, Hayward, Wisconsin. So zooming in for you, you can see the shades of radar indicating that darker gray showing where the heaviest of the snow is falling from Alexandria to Brainerd, uh, even to Sandstone, Minnesota. Winter weather adv uh, advisories along with winter storm warnings in effect. And you can see temperatures in the 30s right now and we'll be tapping into some of that wintry weather in the metro uh, in the next couple of hours. And unfortunately, the roads still uh, icy in patches. We've had a handful of crashes within the Twin Cities Metro this morning, including the semi rollover that has closed Highway 13 both directions uh, between 62 and Sibley Memorial Highway. So you can see uh, that it is causing just a little bit of a slowdown down near MSP International Airport. So if this is your route, just plan accordingly because again, uh, both directions of 13 are currently closed. Yep. Decision 2020 this morning. President Trump and Joe Biden meet face to face one last time in their final debate before the election. That's right, but with just two weeks until voters head to the polls, foreign fingerprints are starting to show up in more possible cases of election meddling. Alicia, the FBI naming Iran and the usual suspect Russia in this plot. The question a lot of us have is how is this all happening again? I know uh, national security officials are telling us both Russia and Iran may be trying to sway voters. So here's what we know about this issue. Issue. Last night in a brief press conference, the FBI said that Russia was once again trying to influence this upcoming election. They also said that Iranian intelligence was responsible for sending emails to intimidate Democratic voters in Florida. The emails told voters to switch to the Republican Party and were said to be from the Proud Boys, a right wing group of Trump supporters. Voter registration information was also taken in hopes to create confusion among us voters and incite social unrest. But the director of the FBI doesn't want you to lose confidence in American democracy. You should be confident that your vote counts. Early unverified claims to the contrary should be viewed with a healthy dose of skepticism. Now, these allegations of foreign interference were short on the details, but could bring fresh urgency to questions of election security heading into the final days of campaigning. And intelligence officials say to be mindful of what information you're getting online and to get your election and voting information from reliable sources like your state election officials or us here at CARE 11. We have a lot of helpful information in our voters toolkit. Just text the word vote to 763-797-7215 and we'll text you a link to get all of that great information, but uh, definitely reminding me, Chris, of 2016. I do think they were on top of it, though, with coming out with that late press conference last night and giving us what they know. Yeah, well, hopefully they learned something from four years ago, and it does right. seem like they're definitely ahead of the curve this time around. Thanks, Alicia. Well, this is a live picture from Nashville right now, where President Trump and Joe Biden will face off tonight for their final debate before the election. 
But this debate, things will be a lot different. To prevent things from spiraling out of control like last time, the moderator will have a button to mute the microphones. This allows candidates to have two minutes of uninterrupted time at the beginning of each 15-minute segment. NBC's Kristen Welker will moderate the debate at Belmont University. That's in Nashville. You can watch it tonight right here on CARE 11 starting at 7. This morning, a COVID crisis happening in Wisconsin. Minnesota is not much better. In both states, more cases, more deaths. Kaya is live in Hudson, Wisconsin this morning. Kaya, how are local leaders dealing with this record surge in cases? Uh, Gia, you know, uh, uh, Wisconsin here has hit a new record high for single day coronavirus deaths. Yesterday alone, 48 people died. Uh, this is uh, an increase that we're seeing also at the hospitals as new patients arrive there. Uh, and several regions are actually reporting that 90% of their hospital beds are full. So Wisconsin, you'll remember, saw its first case back in February, and since then, health officials have confirmed more than 180 cases. So they're really just urging people to take this crisis seriously. We have no benefit in overplaying this, and if anything, it actually harms our ability to deliver care by having people overwhelm us. Our fire department is transporting more COVID patients every day now. You know, I have a fire department that's sleeping in face masks now because they have to. On average here in Wisconsin, there are 3,400 cases a week. So that's why they're really urging people to do the things they've been talking about over the last seven months. Wear a mask when you're in public and around people, wash your hands, and so on. Guys? We can't say that enough, Kaya. Thank you. All right, let's take a deeper look at those concerning numbers from Wisconsin. And as Kaya mentioned, 48 people died, the highest daily death toll there since the pandemic began. And you can see that two week average we're looking at here, this dotted line, that number has gone up and climbed since the end of September. And we also saw about 4,200 new cases in Wisconsin. And you, remember, you might remember after that record breaking day we saw yesterday, that two week average there is now more than 3,000 cases per day. In Minnesota, Worry here also from health experts, 35 deaths reported yesterday. And as you can see, it is tying the state's previous single day high set on May 28th. And then look at this. More than 1,000 new cases were reported in Minnesota. MDH is saying that we're going to need to brace ourselves for more cases, more deaths, unless we do something to change the current trajectory of this pandemic. Now here's a look at today's other top stories in your morning rush. We're learning more details about students getting back to the classroom in St. Paul. A spokesperson for St. Paul Public Schools says stage two is expected to start in November. That's when preschoolers through second graders would get back into the classroom. Third grade and up will have to wait. A volunteer in a clinical trial for a COVID-19 vaccine has died. The participant lived in Brazil and was working with AstraZeneca and Oxford University. It's unclear if they received a dose of the vaccine seen or a placebo. Health officials have redefined what counts as close contact. For months, the CDC said close contact meant spending a solid 15 minutes with someone who tested positive for COVID. Now they've changed that to a total of 15 minutes. That includes shorter but repeated contacts that add up to 15 minutes over a 24 hour period. The Gophers are prepping for their first game of the season this weekend, and today you can show off your school pride. ESPN's College Game Day will be in town Saturday morning. Fans won't be there because of COVID, but you can drop off team signs from 5 5 to 8 tonight at TCF Bank Stadium. The Gophers are hosting Michigan on Saturday night. And that's your Thursday morning rush. Guy, what's our one thing weather? Yeah, pretty uh, robust pattern this morning. You'll see by 10 a.m. rain snow mix by lunchtime switching over to rain and staying rain through a good portion of the day after sunset is when we'll switch right back over to wintry mix. And we have a uh, highway 13 still closed down near Mendota Heights between 62 and Sibley Memorial. But we're also still tracking the situation, as you just heard from the guy, that heavy band of snow uh, over 90 for this entire stretch between Fergus Falls all the way to Sock Center this morning, causing multiple spinouts along that road. 
A live picture from Capitol Hill this morning. In a matter of hours, the Senate Judiciary Committee is expected to approve Judge Amy Coney Barrett's Supreme Court nomination. That's right. This morning we're learning Democrats will boycott the vote. This won't stop the nomination. They would need two Senate Republicans to join their effort. And now this isn't the final vote. The full Senate needs to approve the nomination before she joins the high court. Now that will happen next week, just days before the election on November 3rd. This morning we're connecting the dots on the impact her potential new role could have here in Minnesota. Amy Coney Barrett. It's a name we've been hearing every day for the past month. She's just a couple of votes away from taking a seat on the highest court in the country. If confirmed, her first case would be next month and it could have a huge impact on our state. Let's connect the dots. The case involves President Trump's plan to exclude undocumented immigrants from the U.S. Census. According to Hamlin political science professor David Schultz, depending on the decision, it could cost the state a lot of money. We're talking tens of billions of dollars in financial aid over the next 10 years. You see, census data is used to figure out how much of the $1.5 trillion financial aid pie Minnesota gets. It's simple, less people counted, less of a slice for our colleges and students. And that drop in population, it could determine how much weight we carry on Capitol Hill. Schultz points to several studies that show if the plan is upheld, we could lose one of our eight congressional seats. Taking away any of our seats basically takes away our state's voice in Congress and the Electoral College. Yeah, you don't want to see any of the state seats being taken away. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, the race is on to fight deep fakes. Why one researcher says currently we're falling behind. Then some Metro teachers are pulling off in-person learning by moving the classroom where students are getting their education. Plus the homegrown adventure born from canceled honeymoon plans.